So Gilma had had a particularly bad day. We'd had a really long procedure. Um, he was so weak and so dehydrated that he was having trouble maintaining good blood pressure. Um, he also had very low hematocrit, so he didn't have a lot of blood cells carrying oxygen. Um, we'd have, you know, during the procedure there were four or five vets and everything we could do, every, every piece of equipment, every expert that could possibly be there, but it took all of them to keep him going and it was still a really high risk procedure. Um, and so during that exam, the vets were all really, really concerned. And we just, we'd done everything we could think of and we were just running out of options on how to help him. At the Santa Barbara Zoo, we are so lucky. Uh, we have two lowland gorillas that are part of our collection and, and they are charmers. The public absolutely loves them. And so what is it about gorillas that just makes them uh, such an important part of, of a zoo experience? And some of that may be that they remind us of ourselves, and some of it could be that, that they are active and fascinating and they do interact with people. And they get a lot of attention, a lot of efforts put into the enrichment and care of these animals. And as a matter of fact, the investment that we made last year in taking care of Goma, one of our, our two half-brother gorillas, just absolutely impressed me with the dedication of our staff and the lengths to which they went to address his problems. So Goma is one of our western lowland gorillas here at the Santa Barbara Zoo. Uh, he's currently now 22 years old. Um, he weighs a little over 400 pounds and he came to us with his half-brother Kivu from the Buffalo Zoo. So we noticed that Goma didn't quite seem himself. His appetite was low, he was generally lethargic, and his stools were a little soft, and this had gone on for a few days. So at first, our first impression was, oh, okay, you know, we, he, we made it through winter and he didn't get sick, but maybe he's picking up on one of his, his yearly colds. So we tried him on some anti-inflammatories for that, but it had no effect. He progressively got worse over the next couple of days, and at that point we knew we had to intervene. He could barely get up and walk from stall to stall. He hadn't eaten anything in a long time. For a 400 pound gorilla, to not eat food for two days was, was definitely a big concern for us. The zoo's vet, Dr. Barnes, wants to run blood tests on Goma and give him some fluids intravenously. However, anesthetizing a 400 pound creature is a big job and requires lots of equipment. The team sends Goma's blood out to several labs to be analyzed, including a human lab where pathologists will review the blood films. IV fluids help rehydrate Goma. The team also collects fecal swabs for testing. His stools have fresh blood, which Dr. Barnes determines is hemorrhaging from Goma's lower intestinal tract. The Santa Barbara Zoo animal care team contacts other gorilla experts around the country. So we contacted them and tried to figure out if they'd ever seen anything like this, if they'd have ever heard anything, if any vets had ever found anything in gorillas that might be able to help. Our vet was contacting human doctors, veterinary doctors, zoo doctors, anybody. Um, and it was just, it was stumping everybody. It was a really hard time. Goma's red blood cell count is extremely low. So Dr. Wells attempts to get a bone marrow sample to see if Goma is regenerating red blood cells. He has developed a condition called cholangiohepatitis, which is inflammation of the bile tree and the liver, as well as he has also got some bleeding from the intestine. Despite best efforts, after two weeks, Goma is now critically ill and close to death. Goma's red blood cell count is critically low, and he desperately needs a blood transfusion. Goma's half-brother, Kivu, becomes the blood donor in an attempt to save Goma's life. Large primates are more difficult. They know what's happening. They like to try and deflect the dart with their arms. They like to try and grab it, and when it goes in, they like to pull it out and throw it back at you sometimes. So yes, and they do get very upset. So this is one of the darts that they, Dr. Barnes used on Kibu. You can see it's got some gorilla hair stuck to it as well, where it went into his leg. She got a good shot in the thigh, a nice thick muscle. Um, he pulled it out right away, so you can see there's still some medication in there. And then when he pulled it out, he chews on it a little bit on this little plastic end, and then he hands it back to you. Kivu proves challenging to dart, but Dr. Barnes' aim is true, and Goma's half-brother is now sleeping soundly. You can take from the same species and give a blood transfusion at least once to help an animal, um, but by the second time the body starts building up antibodies, so you'd actually have to type it. 
So it doesn't matter if they're the same blood type or not. We don't even know what blood types gorillas have. But we know we can at least safely use gorilla blood from Kivu to help Goma get better, at least one time. At this point, Kivu's blood is Goma's best hope for survival. Dr. Barnes begins the first gorilla blood transfusion she's done in her career. During the procedure, there were four or five vets, and everything we could do, every, every piece of equipment, every expert that could possibly be there, but it took all of them to keep him going, and it was still a really high-risk procedure. And so that night, it was pretty late, we could tell he was really weak. He was having a hard time waking up from the anesthesia. And so all of us were sort of in the room watching him wake up and just realizing that's kind of the time when it hit us about how weak he really was and how sick he really was, is that everything we had done for him, he just he could barely even wake up from the anesthesia. He was comfortable, he was warm. He'd had all the medicine and all of the fluids and all the food we could possibly give him. So we left that night, and sure enough, when we came back the next morning, um, he was really tired, he was really hungry, but he was sitting up in the stall, had, a, had thrown the burlap over his shoulders, and was just kind of hunched there in the corner, but staring at all of us and up and hungry. <laughs> so he was still very weak, he was still very sick. We were by no means um, through the worst of it, but he'd made it through the night, and we were still there trying to help. So it, he slowly got better and better from there. So there is no doubt that the blood transfusion from Kivu saved Goma's life. Without that blood transfusion, he is very unlikely to have survived another 24 hours. His hematocrit is up from 8% to 23% in exactly seven days. It's unusual, or it's, very, it's quite rare to have an animal who is so critically ill and to have them come back to be a healthy individual again. So that is sort of one of my greater achievements, but I really put it all down to Goma. He's the one who, was critically ill and on the verge of death and he's the one who came back.